I apologize that this one's a little bit late. I didn't actually realize that we had to do um, a blog every week. Um, so I looked looked that over in the syllabus until um, one of my colleagues reminded me. Well, last week was really the first week that I've been in the schools that I felt like I belonged there at all. Up until then, it was really just kind of awkward um, being there, being around students much younger than myself, and sort of just felt like a fish out of water, but it's beginning to feel a little bit more natural. Um, not nervous going into the schools now at all. Um, it's, um, I think that's a huge, huge improvement. Um, one area that I still am struggling with a lot is names. Um, my cooperating teacher has six, um, six classes that he teaches, and probably somewhere between 120 and 130 students and only being in there two days a week, it makes it really difficult to know too many of them. But last week was the first week where names have really started clicking. Um, I think that it's, <coughs> excuse me, um, still, still early in their field experience to really um, get a grip as far as what teaching is going to be like. Um, I've enjoyed thus far being in the schools lab. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about that I think are noteworthy was this week was the first week, um, or the, I mean this past week, it was the first time that my cooperating teacher had been absent, and it was really interesting to see the class dynamics with the substitute, um, and that really has gotten me thinking as far as what the role of um, the teacher is in determining the attitude of the class, how the students are doing and all. Um, the substitute was um, not somebody that um, a lot of the students seemed to appreciate very much, um, and I definitely got that vibe um, from the students, and being a student myself, I thought back and I remembered why I didn't like the days when my teachers were out um, for a variety of reasons, but one of them being that substitute in particular. Definitely have some concerns with that that um, I do want to talk to um, Charlie or Dr. Hicks or Matt about um, because it bothers me to see students not enjoying being in school and that day I didn't really enjoy being there at all either. Um, class dynamics really feed off of their teacher. Um, my cooperating teacher is somebody that people really seem to like. Um, and I think that matters for a lot, and it's an idea that I've just really um, haven't thought of much um, until the last couple of days when I'm trying to determine really what this does, what it, what it means to be a teacher, what's important, what's not important. Um, my cooperating teacher jokes a lot and has a good time with the kids, and it's obvious um, that they love their job, and I'm not sure that that can be said about everybody. Um, I have struggled with the question, um, is it important to be liked? Um, in RA interviews and having been a part of residence life here at Virginia Tech for the last five years, um, we have a question, we'll ask candidate, uh, RA candidates whether or not it's more important to be liked or respected. Um, and I thought about that and have thought about that question pretty much so every day that I've gone into the school. Um, and I'm not sure if you would have asked me six weeks ago, I would have said that respect is important and it doesn't matter if they like you or not. But more and more I'm thinking that it actually does matter and it matters a lot. Um, I think that you have to reach students where they're at. And I've seen some teachers, both in my own experience in secondary and college, who really get it and are able to communicate with the students and give them what they need at that moment. And then there's others that have just been inflexible and not been able to reach the students. And I guess there's a fine line between um, being firm and having control of the class and, and um, showing human empathy um, and being able to be somebody that the students really want to be um, be around and learn from. More and more, I think that respect absolutely matters, 
and I don't think that the, te the students liking you means that they're necessarily going to respect you. Um, but I think that it's important to go ahead and make sure that um, there is at least an understanding there um, of both respect and I think it's important that your students do like you. Um, I know you're not going to reach, I know I won't reach every student, no teacher is going to, um, but I think that is definitely a um, important thing to be thinking about um, in the coming weeks. I'm really seeing the teacher's role in the class dynamics, like I said, um, in both maintaining their attitude and energy throughout the day. Um, the early classes that my cooperating teacher has are all very large. First period's a very challenging class, um, very challenging to say the least. Um, but there's a, about 20, 25 students in there. There's an aide, um, and there's several students with special needs. And then the second and third classes have um, a good variety of students in them, but they're um, both very, very large. And it's interesting to see how during the day the energy level in the class changes. And some days it is much higher than others. Um, and I really see a lot of that coming from this, the teacher um, as well as the aide, and I guess to a lesser extent myself. Um, I know that there have been days where I've gotten in there and have been absolutely exhausted um, simply because I'm, I've got a lot on my plate. This is a very intense program, and the college um, schedule isn't really conducive to getting up at 6, 6.30 or so in the morning and driving 30, 35 minutes down to Roanoke to go to school starting at 8-something. Um, um, there are a lot of um, things that I think a teacher can do to keep and focus the class's energy. Um, I definitely don't see myself as being the peppy cheerleader type, go out, get the class riled up so they get really excited about history, but I think that you can communicate your excitement in other ways, um, and I think actions speak louder than words, and really standing up there and saying to be excited isn't really that, that useful, but there's other things that you can do as a teacher that help a lot. Um, definitely the schedule um, has really hit me in the past couple of days um, because in previous years I haven't gotten up this early, I haven't driven, um, I've had um, more of the struggles with parking here on campus than anybody deserves to have in a lifetime and I can't imagine what it's like to have dealt with it day in and day out um, for three, four, or five years, like some of my friends who have been here, um, lived off campus for most of their undergrad career and are now in grad school. Um, <laughs> I'm, I look forward to having my own parking spot because um, that's one of those things that's, I guess, turned out to be an issue that was something that I absolutely never thought of um, prior to this year and the first day, actually. Um, I think that as a teacher, one thing that I've taken away from this week is that the unexpected happens. There are times where you're ill or where you have to attend a conference and service training or something, and you're not able to be in the classroom and making the most out of every day, even those days when you have substitutes. You feel horrible. I think it's important to still have something meaningful for the students to do, um, because worksheets and videos really they don't cut it for me, and there's something that I hope that I never have.